Hey, hello. Welcome to episode number 18 of the People We Love podcast. I am Adam Choi. And I'm kind of tired and hungry, but uh, I guess that's uh, my own fault. Uh, whatever. I got a few things uh, here for you guys before we get into uh, today's episode. First thing is, there's a new website. I finally have a website with a real domain and everything, peoplewelovepodcast.com. The site uh, looks great. I'm really happy uh, I'm really happy with it, thanks to Karen Happel of Genuine Content for uh, helping me put that together, for really uh, doing it all, really. It's, uh, it's great, and I, I appreciate it. I just feel way more professional and legit now, and I have a one-stop shop uh, with this site where I uh, uh, can send you guys wherever you need to go. Uh, it works great on mobile. You can click on these buttons for iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify to listen, and of course, uh, subscribe. And speaking of that, um, I'll just take this time uh, real quick to remind you guys to subscribe on whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. It might be considered a follow or subscribe, whatever the hell it is on, on what you listen to podcasts on. Just uh, be sure to uh, keep listening uh, back and subscribe, follow, do whatever it is. I appreciate it. And I have more. There's also a Facebook page, yes, but there's also now a private Facebook group where you can join and meet and, intera- and interact with other amazing human beings that I've convinced to listen to this show. And that Facebook group is called the People We Love Podcast Group. And you could search for that and find it on Facebook and uh, come hang out and we'll talk about the show. And you could make fun of me and give me uh, even negative feedback if you want, if you must. Uh, positive is much better. But uh, yeah, so the People We Love podcast group and uh, peoplewelovepodcast.com. And um, yeah, that's all I got as far as that goes right now. Let's just uh, get into today's episode. Today's guest is comedian Christy Brannon. Christy is also a co-host of the fun conspiracy theory, cryptozoology-centric uh, podcast called That's Weird, the That's Weird podcast. And uh, it's about, well, conspiracy theories, cryptozoology, and really anything that makes her and her co-hosts say, uh, that's weird. But one of Christy's comic heroes and podcasting heroes is the always raw and always honest Mark Marin. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, talk weird stuff. Let's talk Marin. Let's talk comedy. Let's talk podcasting. Here's Christy Brannon. So it's good to see you today, uh, Christy Brannon. Thank you for uh, stopping by the studio. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, how's your day going so far? Uh, it's good. Uh, pretty normal day. Normal day, not filled with excitement and adventures and, or misadventures? Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I went for a run. How far do you run? What's a run? Um, I'm I'm working my way up to doing like a 5K. That's, okay, 5K. I'm, it's like three miles. Okay, like yeah, nothing, could... like nothing for people who actually run. But it's like really good for me because I never ran in Seattle because it's too hilly and too rainy. Yeah, I was gonna say probably you need a a, a raincoat. Run run with an umbrella. I always talk about getting an umbrella hat. Yeah. <laughs> you never see those. No, in Seattle you're just supposed to tough it out. They don't have rain like. Like they had like in February here where it just pours down though. It's just like sprinkly. Yeah, but sprinkling all all the time. Forever. But yeah. you don't have to deal with that anymore. No. Because... When I moved here, people were like, How how is it? I'm like, I don't know. I think I I think my depression is gone. I finally don't have a vitamin D deficiency. There anymore. you go. Blame the weather. Blame the weather <laughs> for, for all our problems. It's great. <laughs> so yeah, so you're from Seattle. Why don't you tell me more about yourself and or no, you're not from Seattle, but you spend time there. So let's That's right. uh, let's rewind back from the beginning. Tell me your life story as oh. I always ask uh all my guests. Okay. Um I grew up in Indiana. Uh, like the middle of Indiana, and that was pretty good. Um, rural, like a rural type thing. Yeah, it was. It was a city. I mean, like, let me put it this way: um, we had the best mall for miles. People would come from Illinois to go to our mall, so nice, it wasn't mall. rural, but it also uh, is pretty rural. Like, I grew up across the street from an actual cornfield, and for a time there were cows. <laughs> And you were there from like since you were born till till how long? Uh, twenty two, twenty three. Wait, what's what made? I, I've never been to. I've actually never been to Indiana. But what what major city or was were you near? Was the closest? Um, so I grew up in Terre Haute. Uh, like if you ever watched the Christmas Story, they mentioned it once. Um, near Indianapolis. That's okay, like the that big, I've heard of. That's the one. Like we took uh, field trips to the Indy Five Hundred. 
occasionally. Cool. So what? What? I mean, what was that like? Uh, I mean, this is a general question, but what was it like growing up in Indiana and going to school there? And mm, I mean, it was nice. Like it's all you, you knew. Yeah, it was all I knew. Uh, you you feel like it felt like a safe neighborhood, um, and you could just go like do whatever. Um, and like in my house, we had like seven acres of just like a field and a creek to like go hike in. Sounds pleasant. It was cute. It was uh, it was really super boring and like it, it's a mix of being like idyllic and just like really constricting and like. It's too feel. perfect. Yeah. It's too nice. It's too serene. It's too perfect. And boring. And boring. And that's all, like, the only thing there is to do is, like, get a house across the street from your parents and have kids or something. Oh, man. Work at the Outback. That's not, that's you know not, not that I mean? I'm judging that. Not that, you know, people... I mean, people... Has, some people really want that, but, like, ugh, not me. Yeah. I can I can gather <laughs> from, you, from you being here. Yeah. Here today in Los <laughs> Angeles uh, in the studio. But, um, yeah, so what... what when did you start getting into uh, to comedy, and were you into the arts when you were younger? What were, um, what was fun? Yeah, besides well, uh, the mall. Besides the mall, um, the famous mall, or the gas station. Uh, I I did music actually since I was like twelve. I played guitar and I wrote music, and in college I like really thought that that's what I was gonna do. Like I I wanted to go to film school because um, I like movies and stuff. I wanted to do like at film editing for like if I had to get a sure. real job but I just like really thought like I was just gonna do music and then I just ran out of stuff to sing about you like, ran out of stuff to sing about but, but you're a comedian but you're not running out of material isn't that sort of the same sort of I think it it's is a it's a different kind of inspiration I, I guess I think so I mean it's a different it's different but the same like I ran out of like teenage angst for a little bit and uh just didn't do anything for a little bit. You got to find some new angst. Yeah. Where's the where's the, where's the new angst? What kind of music were you were you making at the time? Just you, this like twee singer songwriter little girl with a guitar kind of stuff. Not like a full uh, orchestra behind you, like a <laughs> band or anything like that. No, I never did that. Yeah, I um, and I I feel like like I liked it, um, and it's all I really knew. But, uh, like, I like stand-up better, I think. Yeah. It feels, for me, a little bit more, ironically, like, a little more honest to do stand-up, even though you get a hide behind the humor, but you don't get a hide behind, like, a guitar. Yeah. So, I used to be really nervous about performing, like, my music in front of my friends and family because, uh... I, I obviously, like, I put on a face. Like, I joke about stuff all the time. I, it's really uncomfortable for me to face, like, negative emotions. I don't want to make other people uncomfortable with my negative emotions. So I'm just always smiling, always pretending things are fine. So, like, with my music, uh, they'd be, like, little sad girl songs and, like, teenage angst. And I would just be like, I don't know. People are going to know that I was sad for a day because I was 16 and had a boyfriend and then didn't or something like stupid. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. But back to what you said about comedy, I feel like um, you can kind of hide behind. Not that you, you didn't do that in this case with your songs, obviously. But I feel like in some ways you can hide behind being vague in a song. People don't know what a song is about. Right. You know, certain lyrics are sort of open to interpretation. But I guess when you're a stand-up comedian telling very specific things about your personal life or just specific things in general like... Uh, Specific things in general, I guess that's an oxymoron. But, um, <laughs> Generally specific. Yeah, I mean, that's true. You can't hide true. behind. It's harder to hide on stage it is. as a comic, I think. I, I, I mean, I performed in front of like lots of different people doing um, music. And then when I moved to Seattle, I was in a sketch group. So we would do comedy. Um, and, and we did like a fairly big crowd once or twice. Uh, and that was fine because you have other people and you have like, like if people don't like the sketch, you can hide behind the fact that maybe you weren't the one who wrote yeah it. they didn't like everyone else it wasn't me it was yeah. the people i'm working with they were the and like they if, were the you, if they don't like your song like maybe you were out of tune like there's all these excuses that you can feed yourself to protect your ego with those other forms whereas with stand-up 
I mean, people, I still see people do it. Um, the lie that people tell themselves in stand up is the crowd didn't right. get me, but I don't believe in that at all. So it's your fault if you don't get the crowd to get you. So yeah. then it's just, if they don't like you, they don't like you as a person, as you exist in the world. It's <laughs> there's, rough. There's nothing you but can But everyone about bombs. It. Everyone bombs. Everyone has bad nights, but, uh, I guess it is what it is, but uh, okay. So you were in Indiana, and then you went to Seattle from straight from Indiana. Mm-hmm. Did you study there? Or you just work there? You traveled there? Or... Into Seattle? Yeah. How did you end up in um, Seattle from Indiana? So I I moved there with my my boyfriend from high school, um, and uh, he had a job. So I kind of tried to find a job for a little bit. I just did different stuff, basically trying to figure yeah. out where I fit and sure. what I could do. Because um, what I went to school for. What I, what I thought I was going to do with my life when I was like 18 was music. And then I quickly was like, ah, nah. And then what I went to school for was like video editing. And that was just so like meticulous. Like it's just something that is kind of neat if you do it sometimes, but not fun if you're planning on doing it for 60 hours a week. Yeah. You have to really love that or be able to tolerate it to be in a small room <laughs> right, for many, exactly. many hours. Yeah, so I kind of started doing comedy more as like a hobby. Like I took a improv class to like the improv make friends in Seattle. You yeah, were saying, in yeah. Seattle, and then uh, from that class, like I met somebody who introduced me to a sketch group where you write stuff and perform it. And uh, I started thinking of myself more as a writer. And I got a job for like two and a half years at this um, like an internet website that was just like basically re- reposting memes. Pretty That's much. awesome. Can yeah. I do that for a living? Can you send me their information? You can. You can. It's a dying uh, job because it's hard to make money off of yeah. advertising now. So, like, good luck. Yeah. That's what I need. Jobs that don't pay anything. Yeah. That are meme related. I mean, I I don't know if I'm allowed to, like, disclose this, but I make more money as a waitress than I did at that office job. I believe it. <laughs> I believe that. Uh, People don't tip well for memes. Yeah. They that's sh- true. They, they really should. Yeah. I would come up with like a like I'd find a meme and then do a big list and I'd have to come up with like a title that was basically like a tag on that joke for like like 70 times a day. So it was like something that was like it felt like comedy writing, but it also was a little bit of a cop out. Yeah, that's what it was. A little bit of it's got some pluses, had some negatives with it, but it sounded like it sounded was like decent experience and maybe a good good thing for you at yeah at the time so, i really enjoyed it at the time yeah yeah so you went from improv to sketch to thinking to your, yourself more as a writer yeah for and then sure. that kind of just led you into starting to do stand-up yeah in I, Seattle. I dabbled a little bit at first when i started um but like then i got way into the sketch thing because with stand-up obviously like you have to show up at an open mic and just be there for a long time. Right. With sketch, you can just plan whenever it's convenient for everyone to meet with your group for an hour a week or whatever. Yeah, and you know when you're going to go on if you're doing a performance at 8.30 or whatever. You, yeah. If you're going to open mic, it could be 8 o'clock, it could be 11, it could be 1 a.m. You don't really exactly. know at a lot of these places. Yeah, for sure. I think um, like here it's a little better because there are so many open mics that you can kind of plan your evening and they have somewhere. You can just, if you just need the practice, you can sign up and just be there for an hour and then go home. For sure. Uh, and in Seattle, it was just a lot. It's a, uh, it's a nice um, community, but it's a lot of just like one or two a night where it's just like, hopefully I can make this other one, but this mic lasts for four hours. And then the other one started two hours ago. Yeah, there's last. less opportunity. Yeah. For timing sure. is more important. Timing is, yeah. Timing is hard and you have to get to know people so that you can like give them a heads up it's hard it's harder to um do a bunch a night when you're new to the yeah scene but it is easier i think to get into it where you have a lot of friends and you have a lot more opportunities and stuff pretty quickly did you uh do you remember the first time you did stand up yeah yeah what was it what what did it feel like what did you talk about do you remember how it went um i want to say i wish i remembered what i talked about I, so I went to an open mic to like watch it and then I was like, fuck it, I'm here. So I signed up um, and I think I 
rambled and it got a few laughs but like when you're up there it feels like you have a lot of laughs and then when you listen back it's like two people laugh. yeah but it felt like people didn't hate me uh so that was good i think i rambled uh some story about how like some i was it was on the way to the mic some guy on the street like said hi like approached me and said hi to me and instead of responding normally i just like freaked out and like did a walked all the way around him like in this like i skittered away you guys are both on foot yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh man i just i i wish i could remember exactly but that was basically what the story was about and then like i what i remember is i was so nervous i didn't i had like one beer and i had drank like a quarter of it maybe by the time i got up i was so nervous that i blacked out from the stage to my seat when i got down when you like, were when you were done after like i held it together after? and then i don't remember how i got back i just like was too nervous how many that pe- i sh- my brain shut down for Damn. a little bit how many people were in the audience that like <laughs> like 15 maybe okay. like it wasn't a big well 50 people is people i mean it's that's true it's yeah nerve wracking yeah I mean, I think it was, like, the aspect of, like, if they don't like this, they don't like me as a person. And it was, like, just so different to any yeah. other performance that I had ever done. It's scary up there. Yeah. Not, I mean, not that I've done, done – I took, like, one stand-up class, but, uh, yeah, I mean – But you've been on stage where it's just you. Yeah. No, but for, for for a comedian, I think it's especially, yeah. especially frightening because you have to get laughs. The whole goal is – your specific goal is to get laughs. And if you're not getting laughs, it's kind of like you're not doing your job. You're not succeeding, I guess. Like, yeah. Well, and, and sitting with that silence and learning to turn it around is something that I'm still not good. I mean, obviously, like I haven't been doing it that long. But like that, I think being able to work with that is is one of the things that makes you really good. So I want to do that someday. <laughs> yeah. I guess improv and crowd work, all that, all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. So who are you? Who are your favorite comedians? We are here to talk about one specifically. Right. That's right. So we um, can kind of. I don't know if you had more. You can kind of talk more about your, you know, your your early open mics and then leading up to where you yeah. discovered uh, Mark Maron, or you can kind of give me the chronology. Totally. Um. So honestly, like, uh, stand up goes back to like, for like forever. Like I've always loved um watching people do stand up, um. And I I know people don't like like Dane Cook or like that kind of stuff. But like when I was a teenager and I just saw those people on yeah, TV, no, like had funny, funny, stuff for and sure. yeah. And so like I loved all the like popular comedians in like the early two thousands. And then like in college, um, I was really into like Ed like Eddie Izzard and uh, Louis C K. Obviously, sure. that's when he was really big and. Uh, just different. But that's actually when I found out about Mark Marin. I think that's about when, because when I first went to college, it was like 2008, 2009. Yeah. So that's when his podcast was really right. like picking up. And I got his Mark Marin's Wikipedia right in front of me here. And the Louis C.K. episode was like one of the highest rated, not like in terms of listenership, but I'm sure that too, but in terms of just like critical acclaim, audience acclaim, that particular episode. Mm, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't listen to his podcast at the time. Um and I actually like didn't like his comedy at the time either. Um I feel like like from what I When you first discovered him, you're like, I Who's first, this guy? You weren't super into him. Well, yeah, I mean I was like a nineteen year old girl. Yeah. Who was like, Comedy's funny, I guess. Yeah, and he's and, like this angry middle aged man. Yeah, I just kinda. didn't I didn't connect with any of the the things that he was talking about. And I think also like over time, like he's grown I think he's grown into himself and the things that he's talking about where he used to just like rant about things. And now it's like, um and I think I've also grown into a place where I can connect with that as well. But like what I think of when I think of Mark Maron is not only just like the way that he's able to make it seem sort of off the cuff and like really connect with the audience, which is something I'd love to be able to do, but also just like the way that his content, he, like I I mentioned, like I have trouble like with negative emotions. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. He has a way of dealing with uh, the negative aspects of life and negative emotions in a way that's like just really honest and really funny. For better or worse, I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. His life and career. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's just like, like he, he'll talk about even like, 
and I, I listen to his podcast now. So uh, he'll talk about like his his parents. His parents are still alive. He still like talks to them, and he'll like talk about them and like something negative about the way that he was brought up from them, uh, that kind of stuff. Where it's like I would never like I would. If I said anything like that about my parents, like, I would be so afraid that they would hear me. And he's just like, this is the truth. This is, I mean, it's kind of, it's a funny thing. Everybody's got their quirks. Everybody's parents are f- fucked up in a way. Like, this is mine. This is personal to me. And, like, it's just a fact. Like, and so, like, why would I hide that fact? It doesn't change that I want to talk to my dad sometimes or whatever. Like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's just so novel to me. And so, like something that I aspire to being able to like handle, I think. Joe, it's, it sounds like maybe what you're struggling is with is being more and more personal with your comedy. Yeah. And I kind of, I kind of deal with the same thing with this podcast a little bit, because I've been getting a lot of advice about like marketing and branding and everyone's like, you know, the smart people who know about this stuff saying you got to put yourself more into the show. You got to put more pictures of you online, start shooting some videos of you like behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. You're trying to build trust with an audience and build your brand. And you're the one consistent thing throughout every episode. But it's like, it's it's scary a little bit to like put yourself out there. It really is. that much. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm pretty self-conscious and pretty like, uh, I, I wouldn't say like I have like a, terrible self-esteem but like I'm nervous about putting myself out there and I don't and it's not even like humility it's just insecurity where I I don't feel like people want to see my face that much or they don't want to like I've been trying to to post pictures of myself on Instagram and be like look I'm doing things uh but it's like I mean it's like the selfie you know everybody complains about people taking selfies but like when I think about it like I love it when my friends take selfies. I like to see their face and what they're doing. It's so, not too much. The right amount. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't In just be vapid doses. about it. Yeah. But, but if there's sure. a reason for you to be there and be doing something, like, I want to see it. And I, and I like seeing that from people who are famous and other people. So, like, I guess it's hard to get used to the idea of, like, well, why wouldn't people want to see that from me as well? Yeah. It's, it's tough. It's just, like... If you don't put yourself out there and you don't promote yourself, who's who's gonna? You have to. Yeah, for real. Yeah, you always think like, uh, oh, I'm being, you know, I, no, nobody cares about this. Nobody wants to see this. But then, like, I think about how much stuff, you know, other people post, and then like my one thing, no one even, no one cares that much to really have that strong of an opinion either way. Right. So yeah. You might as well, well, share it and hope that they do care. Yeah, that's what I try to remind myself is like, if people don't care, or people don't like it, like then they just won't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to stop doing it just in case they don't like it. Yeah, everyone has choices. They could click somewhere else. They could watch something else. They could do something else. Yeah. So many choices for entertainment. And they entertainment. could say mean things to you, but like, I don't know. That's just them wasting their time. Well, if people are saying mean things about your Instagram posts or your podcast or anything you're working on or putting out there, that means they're paying attention. So I, <laughs> yeah, that that's be, true. That that's true. Be, that could be a good thing, too. Negative publicity is publicity. Yeah, so. true. So anyway, so you started to discover Mark Marin in mm. Seattle when you were were you in Seattle at the time, or you already? I was in yeah, I was, I was in Seattle when I actually started like listening to the podcast and actually liking. So that's that, stuff was, that, he's that doing. was your first sort of yeah. intro to him. It says it's his podcast, and then kind of his comedy simultaneously, or yeah. Well, I knew about his comedy and didn't like it before, <laughs> and then I I listened to it again. I gave it another shot and realized like, oh, I like it a lot. Like I really I. Think I think also like in terms of being a stand-up comedian like when I first started and when I first was writing sketches and stuff like I thought of myself as very structured like and I think that you can tell with different comedians like they they have a strength in either performance or writing like that's where their talent is and you can kind of tell which one it is yeah at least which one is the strength yeah, and so, like, mine is definitely writing over performance. Performance is a big hurdle that I have to work on. Yeah. Um, so, but I always thought of myself as someone who does, like, very tightly structured, like, jokes, like a John Mulaney or, like, a Louis C.K. or, or, or Jerry Seinfeld, where, like, the, the joke structure is a part of telling the joke and you think about it. Um, yeah, every word and syllable every single is, word is, is de- yeah. decided. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as a person, I'm I kind of half ass things and just show up and like 
try to work through stuff. Sure. So I feel like the it's interesting that sort of clash. So like once I started like getting into Mark Marin and getting more into um stand up and doing stand up where I would interact with the crowd a little bit or do a little bit of like in Seattle, one of my favorite open mics to go to was like a late night um just like an improv one almost where you'd get topics and just riff on them. Um, someone hands you to decide the topic for you yeah and yeah. Do you have different topics to different comedians have different topics or everyone's doing the same topic or how, does, um, how did that work it depended on on the night and it sort of rotated so you'd gotcha. get like a minute or two to to riff on like a certain topic and, and then, then they give you another topic like you do multiple topics yeah it's yeah like, it was it, awesome it was like, like spinning the wheel or something. yeah That's absolutely like it, it, he called it like comedy jeopardy just pick a topic yeah. riff on it uh it was great and it was a great hangout mike you got a lot of stage time and and some jokes that i still tell now i came up with just like talking um loosely about whatever at that so i i i feel like i really i really enjoy that style or like i know i've seen in one of his specials he talks about how he actually comes up with stuff but i i feel like the mark Marin sort of a little bit looser structure of stuff where he just like really gets into it and goes off on tangents and talks to people in the crowd and like um is just like super honest about like personal stuff like that really appeals to me i don't know if i'm ever i don't know if i'm gonna make it work for me um but it's definitely a direction that i'm leaning towards because it it appeals to me a lot more than sitting down and uh thinking about how like what what word is funnier in this right are you ever afraid when you're like improving or doing these the d- 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 jeopardy thing or or speaking off the cuff uh are you ever afraid of something you might say like something embarrassing or or take something too far or offend someone or you know reveal something um, personal that you don't mean to is that ever a fear that uh not like, anymore not anymore not anymore i used to have like real social anxiety where like like the ne- whatever I said the night before, I would like ruminate on it like all day the next day to the point where I would be like, why, like, why are you like this? Like that yeah. kind of a situation. And just like after doing stand up comedy, I realized you just have to keep showing up. Right. And no one gives a shit. Like they're literally, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. It's just, you, you meet so many different people where it's like people that like mumble crazy things into a microphone uh, don't even tell jokes and over time they just keep showing up so people get used to them and then eventually they're friends enough with somebody who's like dude you gotta like tell jokes and then I saw them like start telling jokes so it's like if that person can be accepted into a community and nobody hates them for the weird things they said which were actually weird and offensive and uncomfortable uh, then like nothing I say is gonna matter yeah. I'm not gonna do anything yeah, well, that's, that can give you confidence by seeing other people who are freaks and, you know, mm-hmm. significantly below, you know, your level of skill. <laughs> that's always that's always comforting to know that you're – there's always someone better, but there's also always somebody uh, yeah. who's not as, quite as good. Well, it's not it's not even, like, skill. Like, there that is a thing for sure, but, but it's not even skill. It's, like, just, like, someone who's legitimately, like, saying something awful. Yeah. And they they just come back and people forgot about it, and so like I don't know I feel like if you can like tell a tell a rape joke one week and then come back and everyone's your friend like nobody's gonna really care that I said something weird about my mom you right. know <laughs> yeah as long as there's drinks being served at these places most people are that's true are uh, pretty pretty that's forgiving probably a factor yeah <laughs> so what what else about Mark Marin or his career uh, is particularly appealing to you did you watch his TV show or uh... I did see a little bit like of that. the TV show. I also like, like I love Glow. Yeah, I, I actually only saw the first season. I, I need to catch. I have a lot of things I need to catch up, but I, I really did enjoy enjoy what I what I saw of Glow and from his yeah his work. Yeah, I I I enjoyed uh I enjoyed seeing that transition of him going into the character, and I felt like that character was like really good for for the other comedy that he's been doing sure it fits his, his uh-huh. style a little yeah bit for sure as, as somebody who's like not very good at i don't think i'm very good at acting but i can like act like myself in different situations sure. so i like seeing that where people can be successful finding a character that's just like 
this is basically a version of me, but yeah, I show. sense some I sense some uh, repeating themes in this in this conversation for sure about like <laughs> just trying to be your best self and your true self, authentic self, and being more like vulnerable and all like all those things. I feel like are yeah, there is. Well, if you if you're talking about stuff that's like just about you and like vulnerable and authentic, then nobody can steal your joke and, right. and you can't no they doubt. can't say you stole that joke because like no one has your exact experience yeah and i and i think just being um vulnerable about stuff is uh it's appealing to me like i i've never been able to do it and i've always admired people who can i'm sure you have at least I'm some sh- to such in some of your jokes and some of what you've performed on stage you're- it's definitely a work in progress yeah. for sure yeah <laughs> Don't be scared. But, uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> easy for me to say. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's something that I'm definitely, like, working on. And, and p- definitely part of why that appeals to me and why I see it as something that I can work on is because people like Mark Maron or, like, uh, Maria Bamford is really great about that, too, where it's just, like, she's very, um, she's very herself and she talks a lot about, like, what she's what's happening with her right now and her like mental health and like that kind of stuff um which for me as a woman i feel like in the early 2000s when i was like learning about stand up comedy and kind of getting into it um it was a lot of people like similar to amy schumer where it's just like a girl like a and and her comedy is great and there's a place for it sure um but I just saw so many like attractive women in mini skirts talking about like dating. Right. Um, that I was like, can't a girl just be really uncomfortable and awkward? Yeah. And just, sad sometimes. You'd rather you want to transcend your your gender. Not that you can't have jokes about dating or sure. being a woman and all that stuff, but you want to have you know. It's just not maybe me. more universal. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Your, have more universal appeal i suppose or something yeah and i i I, that's why i really like maria bamford for that kind of thing too and she fits in with that same just sort of like vulnerability i think no doubt have you ever seen uh mark maron uh perform live or met him or anything like that no i want to see him live so bad does he have you check for shows i mean isn't he performing in la I'll, I'll, he probably know. i've only been here for two months so. oh shit so, so you, give me some time oh well, welcome to la i didn't realize that you just uh literally just got oh, here oh yeah yeah no i moved in well it's almost been three months i moved here in february I would have guessed like a year or two. You have that. You have that. I've been here a year vibe or something, a year and a oh. half or something, something like that. I don't know why I think that. But wow. Well, thanks. I'm not basing. I don't. I don't even know if that's a compliment or I not. See, it's just yeah. an observation. There's like something about you makes me think that you know how to drive home without GPS. Right. That's right. Wrong, and it'll always be wrong. I can't find my way anywhere without well, a the GPS. Valley's mostly, <laughs> the valley's mostly a grid, so you're. That's true. Just get on that. You're highway right. and you're gonna be fine <laughs> you know what i remember mark Marin from he, i mentioned this to a previous guest do you ever have you ever seen the show dr cat's professional therapist it was on comedy central in the 90s it was a cartoon it was like a or an animation and it was like squiggly and he, he was like a therapist this dr cat's jonathan cat's he's a comedian in real life and he would interview comedians and actors in in, in like a therapy in setting that- but they would tell their material, they'd tell their jokes, and above them would be like thought bubbles of oh. like their set being like acted out, their jokes being like sort of in animation. That's so funny. Yeah, like I'm one, sure I wasn't allowed to watch that. Yeah, no, but that's like one of my, that pretty much is my favorite show of all time. So that's anytime so cool. I can mention that, I mention that. And like Mark Maron was, I remember Mark Maron being, being on that be show on as it. one of the guests for sure. You should check that out. Now sure. I want to watch it for it sure. It might make you nauseous and dizzy because it's like squiggly, <laughs> but you, 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 you get used to that. All right. Yeah, for sure. Get used to that 90s squiggle style. Yeah, I got all my, I got all my Mark Maron, <laughs> my Mark Maron, uh, you know, uh, Wikipedia here for sure. Mm-hmm. He, um, he has many cats. He has many cats on the show. He has many cats in real on his show and in real life. And you have do you have cats as well? Yeah, I, I did. I did do just do some research on you and uh, and Mr. Marin. Yeah, yeah. The cat thing is is very on point. I love cats. Did you know that Mark Marin is such a crazy cat person as well? Um, is that part of the appeal? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have For any sure. cats right now, but I definitely like cats a I, lot. I I feel like I 
when people really love cats, I trust them more. Yeah. I think. And it's like... Unless they have 400 cats. Right. Well, oh. then they might have issues with hoarding cats. Yeah. And that's sad for the cats. But yeah. Yeah, I think that um, like people who love dogs and like love to like get out and stuff like that, like I respect them, but I don't inherently trust them i think why is why is that i don't know i think that you it's just a different type of person and uh and it's all arbitrary obviously. oh for sure but, yeah I, but I love making these kind of observations like like if you yeah like how i thought you were here for a year and a half right observations yeah. that have no basis in any sort it's like, of like i don't know i just got that vibe <laughs> yeah i feel certain, yeah my feelings i feel i feel like uh people who love cats like there's just something a little bit m- more openly sad about them, and they recognize the say? fact that they like can't and don't want to take care of another creature as right. much. Right? No, that's yeah. A dog is just a lot more responsibility, and I don't. I don't think it's that I don't trust dog owners as much as cats. Cat yeah. owners, I just don't think I like them as much. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, I'm I'm joking. I, I like I like <laughs> dogs. I like dog owners. People, but yeah, I like cats more. I have all. so many friends that have dogs. They're going to be so mad. Ashley, my podcast other host, she has a dog. She's definitely a dog. Well, she's a dog and cat person, so I trust her still. I think we just might have had a, a segue created, an organic <laughs> segue there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell me about your podcast, how how that uh, came came to be? Yeah. So, um, so that actually, was not inspired by Mark Maron. No, no, no. But podcasting maybe was inspired. Podcasting for part sure. By, by him. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, uh, Ashley, uh, worked with me at that, uh, meme reposting website. And there's this podcast called My Favorite Murder, where these two ladies talk about like murders all the time. Uh, it really, I feel like it really kicked off that whole like women loving um, true crime stuff. Uh, so one day at work, she was just like, Christy, do you like murder? That's a great way to start a conversation. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> That's the right answer, I guess. So it was. So I started listening to that podcast. She was already listening to it. We both really loved it. Um, and we became friends uh, for that. And uh just through that we we were talking and uh i wanted to start a podcast and she wanted to start a podcast and so we decided to do one where it was like it's a similar format where it's just like two girls conversationally talking about poorly researched topics but instead of sometimes we do do murder but instead of murder it's just anything like weird like uh supernatural or aliens or conspiracy theories um, I would say we were skeptical about it, but it's like fun to think about. And it's also fun to like dig into stuff and see why people think these things, sure. especially with conspiracy theories. Sure. It's like, like my they're favorite. They're all true. Yeah, they're all true. They're all 100% true is what I, I found. I have theories about conspiracy. I have conspiracy theories about conspiracy theories. Oh, yes. <laughs> How about that? Wow. I love it. I, we always come up with shit like that where it's just like, well, maybe. I just think that all the ones that are government related or protecting the government those are all true but all the ones that are like you know no offense to your partner the cryptozoology ones <laughs> the ones that have no bearing on human existence or, or life like bigfoot no like bigfoot's not whether bigfoot exists or not that's not going to affect like you know whether the, yeah. the economy yeah or whatever political power that's true uh no i love shit like that and i and i uh i lean towards uh what you're thinking too or like it's just fun to look into like we talked about chupacabra one time which i thought i always thought was some sort of like ancient like idea of like a mexican cryptid or something like it's just a thing that some lady started talking about in puerto rico in the 90s and it's like very reminiscent of this like movie monster that came out like a year before she said that that's it. Interesting. It's so, like somebody just got scared by a movie and was like, this is what it was. And now it's a cryptid that everyone thinks has been around forever. So how exactly did you guys get get come up with this, this idea for the show? You guys were both just a couple of weirdos into weird topics, basically. And you kind of were interested in pod, you were interested in weird things and podcasting and just kind of came together through. Yeah. Through, through conversation. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, so I'll pick a topic and she'll pick a topic and we'll tell each other about the topic. 
But you don't tell the person the topic in advance. No. I did listen to an episode and yeah. I gathered that that's the, the format. Yeah, if, if that's, that's the fun works. part is like then we are like surprised by it and sometimes have like follow up questions or yeah, it's fun. How much research? Because it, actually it sounded like from the episode, I listened to the Bermuda Triangle um, Bohemian Grove episode. Right. It sounded like you guys did do quite a bit of research. Like I was I was pretty impressed <laughs> to be honest with you. you didn't, it sounded like you did more uh, you know, research into Bohemian Grove than I did you know, <laughs> on Mark Maron just printing his Wikipedia. May, I, I feel like it varies. Like sometimes we end up down like a rabbit hole and end up with a lot of oh, they're stuff. They're all rabbit holes. Absolutely. Uh, I've definitely half-assed it a couple times that, and not done as much research. But yeah, I mean, we try to get a good maybe like 15 to 20 minutes of being able to talk about it each, I think. Like, we, we don't try to do, like, an hour, but we aim for somewhere around, like, 40 minutes to an hour. That's kind of where I like to live. I get burned out after, you yeah. know. <laughs> Nobody so wants long. to listen to it after yeah. that point, I think. <laughs> yeah. There's only so much of me I think uh, people can take. Have you ever gotten, have you gotten any um, negative feedback on the podcast? Like, you know, for the show, people are like, oh, that's so stupid that you're into, you're wasting your time with conspiracy theories that's so <laughs> d- or, or, or other kinds of negative feedback or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit like most of the time when people leave like a bad review, it's they don't say anything about it. Um, it's just like a one star and then no, no talking or like I feel like we've had a couple that are like people that left like a four star review, but then was like. They say like and um too much, which is true yeah. objectively, but still, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying. I'm trying to deal with that too. Like some of the same phrases I say. Oh, I say sure in response to guests. Or 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 uh, what I say. I don't even know what I say, but I say sure all the time. Yeah, um, everybody whatever. has their. I say like absolutely, like yeah. all the time. Maybe I need to break out the 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 source you know, <laughs> to have it next to me for, for yeah for future reference. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to do that. Um, and I don't know if I've even, I ought to be more conscientious about it. I think just, uh, from a performance aspect, I think it'd be better, but I'm not. (laughs) I mean, I think part of, part of it is that, uh, I think maybe it's okay because like, uh, like, as I use like Like, in my explanation um... of using like, uh, like, uh. No, because it's 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 you know podcasts are I don't know yours is fairly casual conversation as well and so yeah. is, so is mine here so I'm, I can say like and I'm as much as I want. What do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> what do you think about that, sir? It's always a dude, obviously. Yeah. What do you think about <laughs> that? Whoever's critical yeah. of my likes and ums. Yeah, but I mean, uh, most of the time people have been very positive and re- really nice. That's great. You've been doing this, you're doing it with uh, your partner for how long? Um, I feel like it's been three years at least. Damn. Yeah, we started in, yeah, we started in 2015, great. like in December. So about three years. And you put them out, uh, do you have a regular, uh, yeah, every other week, every other yeah, week. Yeah. We Are- started out doing every week and then we started doing more. Now I'm in LA and she's still in Seattle. Yeah. So it's easier to just do every other. Cool. Yeah. I'm trying to do this every week. I was thinking like someone suggested, you know, if you can put out two a week and I was thinking about it and I realized that would be insane. That's a lot. Yeah. I can't, if I was doing it full time, you know, maybe I could do that. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time for sure. Why don't you tell me, uh, you know, where you are with your fandom for Mark Marin, uh, if there's any updates or if you're going to try to see him or, oh. or, 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 well, th- or uh, yeah, you know. I live in LA now. I, I ought to go to his house. I'm going to just go to his house. Uh, Steal one of his cats, then knock on the door and be like, "Hi, I found this cat. Is it yours?" No, that's just, that's, that's a, kind of a, that's that's, that's a really smart fucked move. up. I'll never do that. that <laughs> I promise, a, I'll never do that's that. That's not a bad. That's not a bad idea because I thought you were gonna say, oh, "I'll just steal his cat because I want to because I like cats and I wanted one of Mark Maron's cats." <laughs> and he has so many anyway. So like, what the hell's the difference? He can the guy spare might, one. Yeah, he but... might not even know. But this 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 <laughs> is a good, I like this idea. This the uh, um, the fake lost cat idea. No, I I will purchase tickets to a show and respectfully sit in the audience. And watch that's, that's my plan <laughs> cool yeah cool and why don't you tell us uh where people can find your podcast and yeah. one more time the, the name where you can find and find you on social media um, all that the floor is yours all of that oh Plug all away. the plugs okay so the podcast is called that's weird you can find us at that's weird.org or on twitter or instagram at that's weird cast um or you can just follow me at christy brannon cool on 
whatever. Awesome. I'm going to do that if I'm not already. I, I think I am already, uh-huh. but I encourage everyone else to as well. Thank you for your time. Thank yeah. you for talking about Mark Maron. I hope he listens to this. <laughs> you like his stand up now. You like his comedy now. At first, I like, I like, obviously, I like his comedy of now. Course. I hope that. <laughs> Me too. Also, I promise I won't steal his cat. <laughs> yeah, we won't steal your jokes. We won't steal your, steal your cats. Um, yeah. No, I'm just looking at his Wikipedia here. Alternative comedy, black comedy, self deprecation, dep- deprecation, cringe comedy, satire, observational comedy. Is that kind of what you, uh, how you envision yourself and where, you know, mm. your style as well? Yeah. Uh, I feel like definitely like in that like alternative or like self-deprecating stuff, that's kind of where I'm headed for sure. What would you say to Mark Maron if you... Uh, if, if I met well, him? Well, well there's two... There, there, I'm going to ask this question of, of people in the future because I think it's kind of two questions. One would be like, if you saw the guy in the street and were talk, could talk to him for a minute, what would you tell him? But then it's like, what would you want to... You know, if you had lunch with the guy... What would you and you know? What would that conversation go back? Oh go like, man! Not that you could script a conversation with someone, right. but like, what were the things that you would want to say? Um, if I if if it was appropriate and I just stopped him in the street, I'd just be like, "Hey, love your podcast," or like, "What'd then, you say?" I'd just be like, "Hey, love your podcast," and then I would leave. I would yeah, away. no, that's fair. Um, and it, if I actually talked to him, probably I I don't know what I would say. I would just uh. At, it's called active listening, where yeah, you just you listen just, and right. follow up with questions, and I just try my hardest. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so on that note, uh, I'll let you get going. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Thank right, you for uh, Thank you again. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's do it. Talk soon. So there you have it, my conversation with Christy Brannon. For the record, I don't hate dogs or dog owners. I've always liked uh, old dogs, actually. Old dogs who've been uh, through a lot. Anyway, I appreciate Christy taking the time, and I'm definitely looking forward to continue seeing where she goes on her comedy journey. But yeah, I won't do another whole social media speech here other than uh, I will say that, again, just go to my website, peoplewelovepodcast.com, because that's a nice gateway to everything, a place to listen, a place to uh, find links to other places to listen, uh, social media stuff, more information about the show, whatever you need. It's all uh, everything you need is right there. Just just love me in as many ways as possible. Is Is that so much to ask? Okay, I'm done now. I gotta go, but uh, let's talk soon. Peace.